Alright, so a little under a year ago, I made a video about how to back up your games to your PC, uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, and today we're going to do a little update. Uh, that tutorial was a little bit long, you had to go through a bunch of different steps, and you needed two different types of hardware, and the computer software wasn't that great. You had to have a Mega Memory Card, or a Monster Brain, and a GB Flash Cartridge. Together that would run you a little over $50 and that's not including shipping. So today we're going to have an easier method that doesn't require all this extra software in a virtual machine and all that nonsense. This should work on Windows 10. I tested it, worked fine on Windows 10 for me. I didn't have to disable anything or make my computer super insecure, and we don't need this flash cartridge anymore. All right, so what we're going to be using is this. This is a cartridge reader for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. It's under $30 and it works with Windows 10, Windows 7, and it's only one part, so there's a lot less steps. There's one downside though. It's made by one guy, and he doesn't make a whole lot at one time. So what you have to do, is you have to go to this one site, I'll have a link in the description. Uh, if it's not in stock, you'll have to join the waitlist, and you'll just have to keep an eye on your email till they come back in stock. That's really annoying, but hey, this is the cheapest and most efficient and fastest way I've found to back up your Game Boy games, and this lets you actually back up the ROM files too, so you can have 100% legal ROMs. Alright, so let's go ahead and get right in. Once you have this ordered and it comes in the mail, you'll need to download two things. You need to download the drivers, which you can get here. I'll have a link to these in the description too. And you'll need to get the flashing software. I'll have the direct links to these. First thing you want to do is go ahead and install the drivers. I'm going to unplug this. Make sure it's not plugged in first. It will be in a zip file. You can just go ahead and run it directly from the zip file if you want. Alright, just go ahead and click extract. And then next. Accept Terms of Service, and then it'll say your drivers are ready to use. Alright, once you're done with that, just go ahead and run the GB Flash installer. English, next, accept, next. For me, it's saying the folder already exists because I've already tested this out. You can create a desktop icon if you want, just to make it easier to get back. And then you'll want a working folder. You can make a folder anywhere on your computer. The last step will be to install the secondary driver. Uh, we'll go ahead and click this box down here that says launch the flasher since we're going to go ahead and start get started. This little freaky box comes up. This is all set up. Let's go ahead and plug it in now. This is process complete. Press enter. Alright. And it'll say COM port connection, device not found, blah blah blah. Let's go ahead and do COM port USB. Alright, now when your device is connected, you should see a little green light. It shows like right there. You can see my device. Alright, so like I said before, working folder. This is going to be my working folder right here. Um, just go ahead and highlight, double click up here, copy. Have this in your clipboard because you'll need that in a second. Alright, so let's go ahead and pick up the game to back up. Um, just like with the first tutorial, games will need to be actually really, really clean. So just your game being able to boot up in the Game Boy will not be enough. So we're going to back up Crystal version, so you can see here, just go ahead and test it out. I haven't actually cleaned this yet, but hopefully it'll be clean enough. If not, I'll be able to show you the cleaning. So you can see it slides in nicely. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is this does not come with a case, so it'll just be the normal raw board, but you can get a case for an extra, like I think it's $3. So um, just keeps it protected, makes it look a little bit nicer. For three dollars, I say it's worth it, but if you want to make it the absolute lowest price, you can go without and it will work just fine. So as you can see, mine comes with a case, looks pretty nice, green light's on. So as soon as we plug in the game, the first thing we want to do is look up the cart's information. So we'll go ahead and click cart info, which is blank, damaged, or not connected. So that means we need to go ahead and clean our cartridge. So that means what you'll need is you'll need some cotton swabs, and you'll also need some rubbing alcohol, or uh, isopropyl alcohol is better. So let's go ahead and give it a good cleaning. Click cart into info, and there we go. Pokemon Crystal version, cartridge type, ROM, MBC, timer. It just tells you a little bit more about the game. Timer means it has a real-time clock. So let's go ahead and read this cartridge. So um, in order to read it, we need to know how big the game is. It says ROM size is two megabytes. So you need to make sure the flash over here is set to at least two megabytes. Um, you can set it to higher if you want, but that would just make it take longer to rip because it would fill it in with extra data. But 2 megabytes is 2048, 1 megabyte is 1024. You can just look at the first digit for the ones above 1000, and that will pretty much tell you what you need. So, alright, we're going to do it at exactly 2. Now, read flash. 
Okay, if, and they go to your working folder, just go ahead and paste it in. I'm gonna call it Pokemon. All right, and uh, yes, there is a write flash button. No, you cannot overwrite your game. So if you want to turn like Mario into Pokemon, no, you can't do that. If you do want to make your own flash cartridges, uh, they do have a method here. It's a lot of work, but hey, it's a cheap way to make your own flash cards. Alright, and when it's done, you can go ahead and test it out. And as you can see, the game is loading up just fine. Alright, so now we're going to actually back up the save file. It's best to have both at the same time, just so you can actually, you know, test out the save file to make sure it's working. So, once we boot up the game one time in Virtual Boy, Visual Boy Advance, you should see we have a save file right here. So, we'll go ahead and overwrite this with what we read from the cartridge. Alright, so to read a save file, first thing you want to do, cart info. And it says your RAM size is your how big your save file is. So RAM size is 32 kilobytes. So you go to RAM, 32 kilobytes, and we're going to read the RAM. Make sure you don't do write RAM because that will overwrite your save file on the cartridge. So to read it, we just go ahead and click read RAM. Select where we want to save it. You can type in a new name if you want to make it something new, but I'm just going to overwrite Pokemon.save. Yes. And as you can see, look how fast that is. That's way faster than using the um, Mega Memory Card or a Monster Brain with the USB 64M. All right, let's go ahead and test it out. All right, and I know it's hard to see on here, but I have my save data loaded up on my computer and on the Game Boy, exact same save file. In the exact same spot. So yep, yeah, it successfully imported my save file, which is pretty cool. Alright, now we're gonna write a save file back. So we're gonna go ahead and mess with Frogger real quick. And we're gonna delete this save file. Or we're just gonna edit the name. Restart the game just to make sure it saved the changes. Here we go, we got Bob on level 11. All right, so we have Frogger plugged in. Go to card info. This is Frogger is a one megabyte game. We don't need to know that since we're just sending a save file over. But the RAM size or save size is eight kilobytes. So let's go ahead and change this back to eight. And this time we're gonna click write RAM. And we're gonna send over Frogger to save. All right, and it says success. Let's go ahead and test it out. And there we go. Second save file, it's called Bob. It is not what it was before. So as you can see, we can even load it up. And we're still where we were before. So yep, that's how you send a save file forwards and back. And just before, sure to always check the cart info before writing or reading a save file. Alright, I hope this helped you guys out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Yep, yeah, bye.